What is an IRA? I get asked that question a lot. I'm going to try to help you. I hope this will be of help to you. I wish you'd consider subscribing. And then if this is helpful, I wish you would give it a like, a thumbs up. What is an IRA? Well, in 1974, the United States Congress um, came up with, a, I think, a great idea to help encourage American citizens to save for retirement. I've told you that retirement is a modern invention as far as the, um, the word retirement. It's never found in the Bible. Um, it wasn't used in days gone by. It's more modern. And I don't personally believe in retirement if you mean to stop doing anything with your life. As long as you can breathe in and breathe out, <laughs> there are things that need to be done. God has something for you to do if you can still breathe. But there will be a time when you can't work as hard to provide. And you may become even an invalid where that you cannot work. And so you need to plan ahead and think ahead and save. And so I think the United States Congress came up with a very clever idea uh, starting the IRAs of American citizens. So IRA, it stands for Individual Retirement Account or maybe technically it's really actually Individual Retirement Arrangement. That's uh, IRS code, Individual Retirement Arrangement. But so many people just call it Individual Retirement Account. We may refer to it that way in this video. Now, people say, well, Brother Fox, is, um, is an IRA a good investment? Well, an IRA is an investment vehicle. You know, IRAs can uh, use lots of things. I mean, you can have mutual funds with your IRA. You can have ETFs. On some video, I hope to explain what ETFs are. Uh, you can have stocks, individual stocks. You can have plenty of boring uh, CDs. They're safe, but they don't make a lot of money. Um, and there's several different kinds of IRAs. So let me talk to you for a few moments about the different kinds of IRAs. Number one, there's what we call a traditional IRA, traditional IRA. And uh, these are, generally speaking, tax deductible, meaning that you do not pay taxes on your contributions until you begin to withdraw the money. And so if, uh, if you're in a high tax bracket, then uh, some folks have chosen to use the traditional IRA. Now, when it began in 1974, they were all traditional IRAs. They, we didn't have all these different kinds that I'm going to talk to you about uh, right now. But uh, the traditional IRA is still a very attractive um, retirement vehicle uh, to put money in. For folks. And if you are in a high income bracket, it might be best to consider a traditional IRA. But then the second kind is called a Roth IRA. There's a senator named William Roth, and uh, the Roth IRA is named for him. And uh, the Roth IRA, you pay taxes on your contributions. As the money goes in, you're paying taxes on it. But then your money grows tax-free. And we're going to talk about that, even give you some calculations and help you think about uh, what a good opportunity a Roth IRA is. And then there's a SEP, a SEP IRA. Uh, these are for small business owners generally and self-employed folk. And it's a, uh, a simple um, uh, pension kind of plan IRA. And that can really work uh, for a lot of folk that are in that situation. If you are self-employed or if you have a small business of some sort, um, if your employer will allow it uh, or if you own the little business, you ought to look into the SEP, S-E-P, IRA. And then there's uh, a fourth kind called a simple IRA simple. It's a savings incentive match plan for employees. And let me say this right now. If your employer will match your contributions into any kind 
of a retirement vehicle. If it's a 403B, if it's um, uh, an IRA, whatever uh, retirement vehicle, if your employer will match, you know, 3%, 5%, 8%, whatever it is, you need to take that opportunity. That's like getting an instant raise. You ought to absolutely go to the, the top number that they will match. And maybe you need to exceed the top number, but uh, certainly you ought to do whatever they will match. And so um, the simple IRA, that's a, a really outstanding opportunity. Now, there is a conduit IRA. Um, it's a traditional IRA that's funded uh, through a qualified plan uh, for something like uh, a 401k plan. And um, I don't even know if the conduit IRA is very practical or if it's even available today. Um, but I want to talk with you primarily, primarily because most of you that are watching these videos, the vast majority of you, there's two real choices, and that's the traditional IRA or a Roth IRA. Now, the traditional, let me, um, let me go over it again. A traditional IRA, you do not pay taxes on the contributions until you withdraw. Now, I'm going to tell you a little story about me. Almost 40 years ago, I began my IRA. Um, I was 19 years old. Do the math. You can tell. I've uh, been around a while. Okay. I was 19 years old, and... Um, at one of my two jobs that I had as a 19-year-old, I made $125 a week. And the employer said to me, um, if you will put 3% of your paycheck into this uh, IRA, we will match that. Okay, I got paid every single week, $125. That meant I put $3.75 of my money into that IRA. And then the the business, they put in $3.75. So my contributions for each week was $7.50. Okay, so that's less than $400 for the entire year. But it got me started. And you must understand when uh, IRAs began, you could only put $1,500 a year into them. They've grown, and I'll tell you about current levels that you can put into IRAs. But uh, that was a traditional IRA, and that's where I got started. And I opened it just at a, a local bank. And so I made very small interest on it. But it was um, where I did not have to pay taxes on that. Now, I've left it in that traditional IRA. I've moved that IRA around uh, different places. It's no longer at that bank. But um, when I began taking money out of that particular IRA, I will have to pay taxes because I did not pay taxes on the money as it went in. And uh, some other video, maybe I can give you some strategies on how to withdraw your money out of your IRA. By the way, don't withdraw from your IRA unless it's an absolute total um, crash in your life emergency. It has to be an overwhelming, extraordinary emergency that you would ever take your money out of your IRA. And that happened in me and Renee's life. And we had to take it out. Uh, Renee was in the hospital for 42 straight days. I had no other resources at that point. And so I did take money out of our IRA and paid the hospital. And I'll tell you some of that journey sometime. And so uh, we began again, though, uh, as she got out of the hospital and began to improve. We began again on the journey of saving for retirement. And uh, we'll talk about that. But um, currently, my wife and I have a Roth IRA because the Roth IRA, uh, you pay taxes on the contributions, but then you don't pay any taxes uh, on, on the growth of that IRA. So Renee and I, let me explain what we've got now. Renee has a traditional IRA and Renee has a Roth IRA. So she has those two. Then I likewise, I have a traditional IRA and I have a Roth IRA. 
Now, the current year that we're in, this is 2021, we didn't put any money at all in our traditional uh, IRA. We put it all into Roth IRAs. We also have a, a 403B. Uh, we'll talk about that on another video. We're talking just about IRAs today. But Renee and I have chosen, we believe led of God, we have uh, thought and planned and calculated, and uh, we believe it's best for us to, um, to use the Roth IRA. Now, uh, how much can you put into an IRA today? You know, originally it was $1,500. That was the limit. But at the time of this video, for Renee and I, we can put $7,000 each into our, my IRA and into her IRA. So it'd be $14,000 for the two of us. And I encourage uh, all of you to try to fully fund your IRA because before you know it, retirement will be upon you. <laughs> you know, I got my first senior discount when I was 41. I look so old. I've looked old my entire life. <laughs> um, but uh, now at my age, I'm almost 58. And um, at my age, see, over 50, you can put uh, what's called a catch-up amount. It's an extra $1,000. All of you that are less than 50 years old, the max that you can put into your IRA, whichever one you have, um, the max you can put in is $6,000 currently. They, they may raise that, uh, but in 2022, they're not raising that. Those are still the numbers. And uh, 403Bs did go up slightly, but not, um, not on... Um, these IRAs, the amount of money you can give to your children without any tax ramifications or even give to friends, that went up. Um, but IRAs did not go up for 2022. Now, here's the question. Brother Fox, should we have an IRA, an individual retirement arrangement, an individual retirement agreement? Absolutely. Yes, if at all possible. Well, where can you open that? Friends, you can open that lots of places. A local bank, they can help you. That's the easiest way, perhaps, to do that. But you're not going to get fantastic rates at a local bank on a passbook savings or even on CDs. Now, uh, an IRA CD, mm, it's very safe. You're likely not going to lose money there. But they're re really boring, and they hardly make anything. Now, uh, let me run some uh, numbers for you. Just before uh, I began recording this, I ran some numbers. Uh, in 2019, Renee and I, in our accounts, our IRA accounts, in 2019, Renee and I made 19.61% growth. 19.61%. That's pretty phenomenal. In 2020, we were up 11.47% percent, almost 11 and a half percent. And then here in 2021, we're at the very end of 2021 as I record this. Um, with so far this year, we've made 10.73 percent. So uh, approaching 11 percent growth. Now, we've been in a, what's called a bull market for quite a while. I'm talking about the stock market now, you know, for over 10 years. America has been in what's called a bull market. And, uh, of course, we did have a crash in, um, in March of 2020 when the, uh, when the pandemic started. By the way, when the pandemic started and Renee and I saw that uh, the stock market went way down, we did not take our funds out. That's the worst time to take your money out. Don't do it when it goes down significantly like that. Don't do that. And in an upcoming video, I'll talk to you about withdrawal strategies. Uh, but uh, that's the worst time to take money out. In fact, what did Renee and I do? As it ne nearly hit the bottom, she and I put in $4,000. Now, those $4,000 here just a year and a half later probably worth eight to $10,000 because it recovered friends and made money. And so the best time to buy into mutual funds 
is uh, when there's a big dip. Uh, that I look at it as the market going on sale. All right, I told you I ran some calculations. Um, let's just suppose, let's suppose that uh, we've got a 20-year-old that is uh, watching this video and they really get enamored with this and they decide that they're going to really work at investing in their future. And so um, let's suppose that uh, at age 20, somehow they're able to have their IRA with $10,000 into it. At age 18, they open their IRA, and at age 19, they put some in. What if by the age of 20, what if at the age of 20, they could have $10,000 into a Roth IRA that was in a mutual fund? Just a, a regular old mutual fund. From age 20 to age 70, never touch it again. Don't add anything to it. Don't take anything out of it. But from age 20 to age 70, $10,000. Okay, I'm going to write that figure down here. $10,000. Okay, $10,000. Mm, it's a lot of money. What does $10,000 become in mutual funds in 50 years from age 20 to age 70? The young person doesn't do anything with their IRA. It's in a mutual fund, an average mutual fund. Mutual funds over the course of 50 years, they actually average slightly over 8%. So at an 8% return, I told you, Renee and I, we have most of our IRAs and mutual funds, but we have some in hard assets. We have a little bit in money market. Uh, we have, you know, for stable, stabilization. But uh, I told you, 2019, we made 19.6%. 2020, 11.4%. This year, 10.7%. So let's say from age 20 to age 70, are you staying with me? From age 20 to age 70, the young person puts $10,000 in at age 20. Never touch it again till age 70. How much money does it become? Here's the number. I crunch the numbers. It becomes $538,000 at 8% return. $538,000. Now, as the young person put their $10,000 in, well, they paid taxes on it. All of the growth, the $528,000 of growth, if it's in a Roth IRA, you will never pay taxes on the growth. That's the way the bill is. That's the way the law is. Now, you know, Congress may change the law, but the way it's set up, and I'm, I'm wanting the U.S. Congress to keep their word as the bill, as the statutory law is, the Roth money, mm, it cannot be taxed. And so, what's the point? The point is, get saving in an IRA. Please, I beg of you, I urge you. And in future uh, videos, we'll talk about um, uh, exact investments, EFTs. Mm. Renee and I have some money in EFTs, mutual funds. We've got a fair amount in mutual funds. And look, I want to invest in things that a Christian can invest in. So I don't invest in alcoholic beverage. There's just things that Renee and I do not invest in as Christians. But um, there's, there's good mutual funds that do not have sinful stocks in it. EFTs, boring CDs, they do have their place. Renee and I have a little bit of our money in boring CDs. They're very, very stable. You know, in March of 2020, when the stock market went way down and people lost significant amounts of money on paper, um, lost significant amount of money there, mm, those boring CDs, <laughs> they kept chugging upward very, very slowly, very, very quietly. But most of our money took a big crash. But it all came back and more. And that's what happens in the stock market. The stock market is not for short-term investments. At least that's not the way I do the stock market. My, um, my investment in mutual funds 
primarily mutual funds, a little bit in EFTs, um, and a tiny bit in individual stocks. But um, it's for the long term. I've been doing this since age 19 and uh, working at it. And Renee and I became completely debt-free at age 43. Debt-free at 43. I want you to establish a goal of becoming completely debt-free. It's wonderful. <laughs> it's wonderful to be debt-free. No credit card bills, no high interest. We, we still have a credit card. We pay it off monthly. But uh, we never pay interest. Uh, I don't like paying interest. I like getting interest. And so I want to encourage you. Manage your money. And the bottom line in this video, put some money every year in an IRA. And if you can possibly use the Roth, if you can possibly put your money in Roth IRAs or Roth 403Bs, any kind of a Roth vehicle, if you can possibly do that, I think that's a great idea. May God bless you.